Hey, it's Coach Justin from Ultimate Baseball Training. Welcome back to another video. And in today's video, I wanted to do something really cool, really special. Today, you're gonna learn six hitting secrets that you can learn from Babe Ruth and actually apply into your swing. So what I love about looking at old time players like Babe Ruth is, you know, see what he did in his swing and then what current players are doing in their swing and then see, you know, what kind of overlaps. And obviously the overlap stuff, those are tried and true principles that were once used by players like you know Babe Ruth and Ted Williams, and they're still being used by the greatest hitters on the planet today. And so if they're good enough for the best hitters on the planet, they're good enough for you too. So without further ado, I'm really excited for this video. Let's get into the six hitting secrets that you can learn from Babe Ruth. All right, so the very first secret that you can learn from Babe Ruth is that stance is truly just a starting point. And I think this is really important because a lot of players out there are searching for the perfect stance. And to be honest, there is no perfect stance, right? Because you see, you know, at the major league level, every single hitter, you can look at a lineup and one through nine, every single hitter stands slightly different. And I really want to use Babe Ruth as, as an example because obviously he hit for a ton of power and the way that he stood is very different than a lot of players stand, right? He had his feet really, really narrow, almost touching each other, really narrow stance. And he had his hands really low down here like this. And so a lot of players, you know, they just have this cookie cutter mentality that, hey, if I want to hit for power or if I want to be a good hitter, I got to mold my stance after this particular player that I like. And that's simply not true. Now, would I recommend the starting position of, you know, a super narrow stance and hands down here for most hitters or for most younger hitters? No, I would not. I would recommend more of an athletic stance, more of your feet about shoulder width or a little bit wider, right? But the point that I'm getting at is it doesn't matter if you stand like Babe Ruth with your feet together and your hands down here, or your hands can be up here, or you can stand really, really wide. You can have your hands in here like this, your hands back here like this, or higher. You can be slightly open, you can be slightly closed. At the end of the day, I really wanna stress that the stance is truly just a starting point, and so the reason why that's a secret is because Babe Ruth was able to do something traditionally that's a different stance, and he was still able to be a powerful, successful hitter. So that's the first secret, the first takeaway from Babe Ruth. Doesn't matter how you stand, it matters how you look at the launch position, and it matters how you look at the point of contact. Let's get into the next secret, which is create an angle with your body. Now this is really gonna help you with developing more bat speed and more power. And what I mean by that, again, I'm gonna get in Babe Ruth's stance. So Babe Ruth, again, he had his feet really, really narrow like this, and he had his hands down here, and he didn't really have much of a load, much of a load backwards because his feet were so narrow. And so what he had to do to generate a lot of power is he had to create an angle. And the way that he did that with his feet so narrow is with his front hip here, he actually basically started pushing that towards the pitcher and it basically just allowed him to fall towards the pitcher. Now, what I want you to pay attention to is look at my backside here and notice how as soon as I you know, bump this hip and begin falling forward, my body goes from standing straight up and down like this to creating an angle like this. So this is what Babe Ruth did to create his angle. Again, he started in a position similar to this and then to create his angle, his first movement was something like this. Now you see how I created that angle there? Now again, I, I don't recommend starting exactly the way that Babe Ruth did in his stance, so how can you create the same angle? Because as you saw, when I fall forward towards the pitcher like this, I'm able to generate so much momentum and so much bat speed and power is getting ready to just be exploded on the baseball. But if you don't stand that narrow, how do you create that angle? Well, what you can do is just get into your, your stance like this, let's say a little wider than shoulder width, and what you need to focus on to create that angle is loading against your backside, not over it. So you wanna load against your backside so you continue to have that weight, you know, where it's easy to fall back forward towards the, the, the picture like this, as opposed to, right, if I go into my load and I load over my backside, then I'm off balance, then I don't create that angle, okay? So this angle, you'll see this in, you know, all of the power hitters out there. A guy that has a leg kick that does this great is Jose Batista or Josh Donaldson. You look at both of them at the top of their leg lift and they're not straight up and down like this. They have an angle with their backside, making it easy for them, again, to continue that momentum 
going towards the pitcher. And then once their front foot hits the ground, that's when they stay back, okay? But you see that with the greatest power hitters in the game. You also see it with pitchers, right? No highly successful pitcher truly gets to a balance point where they're exactly straight up and down like this. If you actually pause at their leg lift, they have that same angle that we're talking about. So create an angle. That's a huge secret. It's really gonna help you out. So moving on, creating that angle that we just talked about, what does that allow us to do? That allows us to generate momentum. And momentum in your baseball swing is a good idea, right? That's how you're gonna generate bat speed and power. And I think a lot of hitters have this misconception, this belief that you know maybe it's something that's kind of coached into them when they're younger players, but they have this uh, belief that they just have to be quiet throughout their entire swing. And so when they think about, okay, stay quiet and stay back, it actually makes them, you know, their body language kind of constrict like this, and they just look like a, a timid, weak hitter at the plate. And then they don't want to have a big load or a big stride because they're trying to stay quiet. So they get their front foot down early, and then they try to throw their hands at the ball. And obviously that doesn't look like a very powerful swing, does it? And so what I want to talk about is momentum is a good thing when we load and we gather our weight against our backside like this, another common problem I see is a lot of players think that they have to keep their weight back and they hear stay back, stay back, stay back. So they stay back after they load. So they load and they just keep their weight back like this and then they try to swing. And you only stay back after you transfer that momentum towards the pitcher. So what that looks like is I gather my weight against my backside and then that weight's back here. I want to transfer that energy going forward and then when my front foot hits the ground and I start that rotational component of the swing, that's when I stay back. But momentum is a great thing in your swing. The next secret we can learn from the babe, the great Bambino, is your hands go back as your body goes forward. So if I get into his stance here with his little narrow stance and he starts in a position like this, really the timing is, you know, his load is basically just a little rock back like this. And then as he starts his movement towards the pitcher, that's when his hands go up and back like this. So we started with him down low and as he goes forward, that's when his hands go back. And so I think a lot of young hitters have this timing messed up. If I go back to more of a traditional stance, I think a lot of young hitters think that as they load, as they go into their gather, that's when they, you know, kind of load their hands or they push their hands back. And that's just not the proper timing. If you want to be a successful, productive, powerful hitter, it has to be, you know, your hands this is their starting point, all right, if this is the way that you start in your stance, right? If your hands start here, as you load, they pretty much stay in the same spot. We don't want to push them back. They pretty much stay in the same spot. And it's even when we're striding forward, they still pretty much stay in the same spot. But it looks like we're pushing them back because what we're doing is we're walking away from them. So I can even just stand here like this. If my hands are in a position like this, they stay here. And it looks like I'm pushing them back if I walk away from them right? And that's how you generate that separation there. And so just understand however you stand, if you have a narrow stance or a wide stance or whatever, that's the timing is your hands stay in a very similar position as you load, as you go into your gather. It's as you're walking away, your body's moving forward towards the pitcher. That's when they go back. Another secret you can learn from watching Babe Ruth if you really dive in and you know pull up some old clips of him swinging is that the hips rotating really pull everything else through the zone. And so I think a lot of hitters spend, in my opinion, way too much time thinking about things like hand path, thinking about you know throwing their hands, 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 hands towards the ball, knob towards the ball. I think that if you, you know, do everything properly with your lower body and your big muscles and you rotate properly, everything else gets pulled through the zone. And let me, let me show you exactly what I mean by that. So if I do everything right, my gather, and I stride forward and I get into a really good launch position, my front foot lands slightly open about 45 degrees. As this front heel drops and I begin that rotational component here, my hands, I can literally not move my hands. And watch, I can almost rotate the bat I'm not moving my hands. My hands are still in the same spot. All I'm doing is I'm rotating with my lower body here. If I do this movement here, my hands almost just naturally get to the point of contact. And so I think that too many hitters, again, spend too much time worrying about hands. Trust me, as your hips explosively rotate, everything else is going to get on plane with the pitch and your lower half is really going to just pull everything else through the zone like this. Okay. So worry about your lower body mechanics and allow your lower half and your hips 
you know, explosively rotating to pull everything else through the zone. All right, and the last secret for today's video, this one's really gonna help you out with your bat speed and your power. As you're progressing through your swing, allow your knees to pinch together. And this is something that's very subtle in a lot of major leaguer swings, but it really is a result of them rotating their hips really rapidly and doing everything correct with their lower body and then their knees pinch together and that gives them that extra boost in power, okay? so. A lot of the times if you watch your favorite hitters on TV, you'll notice if you pay attention to their back foot, you'll actually notice that their back foot sometimes comes off the ground or their toe drags forward like this. And how they get there is again, their hips are exploding really, really rapidly. And just like we talked about in the last point, that's what pulls everything else. And they're turning so quickly that this back hip also comes forward and their knees pinch together as their front side goes into that hitting against the firm front side, right? It gets in that locked out position and then their back hip is exploding forward so, so rapidly that this back foot actually comes off the ground and slides forward like this and it looks like their knees are pinching together. And so I don't think this is something you should focus on. You know, don't think about squishing the bug or don't think about driving the knee or anything like that but that, that's just a great sign that you're doing everything else right in your swing if your knees do end up pinching together. So that's it, I really hope you enjoyed today's video. And if you did, and if you're a serious player looking to really take your hitting, your bat speed, your power to the next level, then what I want you to do right now before you forget is click on this card right up here and grab my free bat speed boosters workout. This workout is gonna quickly help you take your bat speed and your power to the next level, and it's 100% free. So click on this card right up here, grab your free workout, try it out, and I promise you your bat speed within the next week is gonna drastically improve if you start applying these drills, all right? If you enjoyed today's video, hit that like button for me, I'd really appreciate that. And last thing, be sure to subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already, and turn your notifications on, hit that little bell down there, that way you're notified whenever we release brand new videos every single week, all right? So subscribe to the channel, join the UBT community, the UBT family, Thank you so much for watching today's video and I'll see you next time.